off to the airport. 5.58 in the morning. So, just arrived at the Gaff, nice little Airbnb in Palmer. I'll do a little tour. So, this is where a lot of work is going to go down. It's all we need a little studio, natural light to be productive as fuck. Goal for today is to get a food shop in because if you don't have any food in, the chances of going out and making bad decisions are much higher. Obviously, I'm going to go into more depth about what I'm currently doing in terms of diet but I am three weeks out from a photo shoot, so I'm tracking absolutely everything, keeping steps high. Training is normal. This is just more of a little work retreat. It's not a proper holiday, um, but it's gonna be good. I will have a few kind of off-plan meals, but I will stick to my calories to a T, so probably pick up when I get a food shop in. I think I'll be able to find all the kind of basics on my meal plan. It's all just basic shit, so yeah. First things first, unpack, make everything tidy. Brought about eight pairs of running shorts because you never know what colour you might want to wear. And I'll probably only be doing like three runs, but just in case. And you also need multiple pairs of white trainers when traveling because you never know what situation you might get into. And I would always recommend two pairs of runners, speed pair and long run easy pair. Just gonna get the food shop in, feeling very lean. Cut's working, three weeks out. So thankfully found a nice little supermarket literally just outside the Airbnb. Um, managed to get most of the staples in my meal plan. So that's the plan, chatted with my coach, JJ. Uh, only here for like four or five full days. So essentially just sticking to the calories, sticking to the macros eating most of the staple meals and then probably like adapting one per day just to allow for a little bit of flexibility and make some life gains and coming in pretty quickly for the shoot like we're only looking to drop another two to three pounds um, and I'll explain this in a separate part of the video but we're basically just going to achieve that by upping step count so nutrition is not going to change for the next three weeks and um, so I'll just run you over what I managed to get in the shop so I've got a few bits that I still need to pick up, but basically just focused on protein and veg and kind of stable carb sources. So chicken, prawns, sweet treat, protein pudding things, eggs, usually just do mostly egg whites. Then fruit, pineapple, blueberries, asparagus, and then gone with brown bread instead of bagels, couldn't find them. And then gone with oats, which are a staple in the diet. And I got some dark chocolate as well, uh, as I say, few more bits to pick up but this this will be pretty much it just simple um i'm sure you can find this in most supermarkets it's just about actually taking the time to go and look the first one i went into was terrible um and it just kind of had junk food in but managed to find a decent place so i think that just goes to show like if you want to stay on track when you're on holiday you can that took me all of 10 minutes to go and do that um and i think it was about 45 euros which is a hell of a lot cheaper than dubai um obviously if you're going on holiday you probably want to adopt a more flexible approach than me but i'd say this is more of a, a work retreat um and i've got a goal that i'm working towards but yeah not much effort to be fair that's tomorrow's 10k run route sorted unreal So back in the apartment now, went and did some work, a nice cafe in the harbour. Just had our group call with clients to do that 6pm every Thursday evening. So me and head coach Dylan, we're chatting to some people on there. Just, just in terms of goal setting for summer, it's a really important time to make sure clients are focused. Otherwise people will go off track. Um, one of the girls that we've got in the programme as well has just been through and an ACL reconstruction uh, knee operation, so we're helping over that. Um, we just wanted to jump on and kind of explain why I've chosen to start making some YouTube videos. It's something that I thought about for a while. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube myself, actually learn a lot about fitness and business and productivity 
through watching YouTube uh, and I've, it's always something I've wanted to do but just never really didn't used to have the confidence to come on camera to be honest and never really kind of found the time to do it but I'm going to commit now I think people will find it useful um, I get a lot of questions asking kind of like in-depth things about nutrition and training and I feel like I can't really showcase that properly on Instagram with it being a lot a lot shorter form content so that's the plan with YouTube basically just to document provide value for my clients as well to motivate them so that they can see what I'm doing day to day um, and for anyone I guess starting out with online coaching I'm now almost three years into it um, done very well over the last year and a half that's when it's really well the last year to be honest that's when it's scaled a lot so I can definitely provide some advice there in terms of how to grow and how to provide a good service but yeah that's kind of why I'm doing this and I'm excited to see where it goes I do enjoy documenting things and I want to be able to look back in you know six to twelve months time and say that I'm significantly further on than I am now because that's what it's all about isn't it it's about progressing in the gym with your fitness personal development business so yeah that's why I'm doing it First night, dinner time, me and do with what I've got. Hit my calories, a little bit low on carb, a little bit high on fat, but it's not the end of the world. Um, plan for tonight is just get this munched on me. Egg white and egg omelette, absolutely lush. Um, and I'm gonna plan my day so I know exactly what I'm doing tomorrow. We've got a double day tomorrow, hybrid, 10K easy run in the morning. Literally first thing, fasted. Gonna try and smash out a load of check-ins early on in the morning so I can go out and do a bit of sunbathing, improve this tan, then I'll have an afternoon work block and then go to the gym for deadlifts. And then I found this restaurant just outside downstairs that looks pretty nice. They do a tuna, tuna steak with some prawns and potatoes and veg, which looks pretty naughty. So I'm gonna get that for dinner definitely fit in the calories as I said before I'm gonna allow myself to have like one meal per day that's a little bit different to the plan that I'm on but we'll be within the macros and the calories which is the main thing and then when I get back from Mallorca I've got I think like two and a half weeks till the photo shoot to really dial it in but as I say very very close from where I want to be so it's just a matter of staying on point now Fucking hell, 78.9 kg, shredded. Definitely not 26% body fat, but those are the same scales that I've been using at home, I brought them with me. Um, so I'm gonna call that representative. We'll see what, where I'm at tomorrow and the day after, but if that's right, that's a new low way in, a considerable one. So getting shredded. Right, so I'm gonna go out, get this run done now. It's 20, I think it's 21 degrees, um, half six, so it should be okay. I've been used to running at like 30 degrees and above in Dubai with worse humidity, so I reckon I'll be able to keep it aerobic at about a 5.30 to a 5.40 pace, but I'll be tracking the run on my Strava and then tracking my heart rate on Whoop, so I'll check in after that. Going easy for this one, just because I've got a slightly quicker, longer run on Sunday, uh, and obviously I've got deadlifts tonight as well, but I'll check in after that and let you know how I'm going. I'm wearing the white and pink Nike Vaporflies. That's the uh, trainer of choice today. Hot lasted all of two minutes, but I love being productive and multitasking to a running same time as the most.
right, that's the 10K boxed off. Heat wasn't an issue whatsoever. I'm just so used to running in like high humidity and high temperatures in Dubai. I think it was about 22 degrees for the whole thing. Kept the heart rate at 145, did the 10K in just under 55 minutes, I think. So it was, it was a 5.35 pace, which is zone two for me. Happy with that. So I'm gonna get in some check-ins now, then have some food, then go for a walk, get some sun, do a bit of work at a cafe, then I'm back for more check-ins later on. I like to do check-ins in the apartments, so there's no background noise. And then I have a call with my mentor tonight, and then I'm gonna hit deadlifts, and then I'm gonna go out for dinner and get that tuna steak, I think. Okay, so just gonna do a voiceover of my low body training session on Friday night. So I'd done that 10K run in the morning, basically just finished work, and then I had planned on training at CrossFit Palmer, but they basically close early on a Friday. So I found this gym called McFit in the middle of Palmer. Managed to get a free day pass there to do my deadlift session. So what you can see here is, well, this is an adductor stability drill, but this kind of forms part of my mobility routine, I guess you could call it. I've been working with a coach called Fred, Fred Silcock. He's based in London and he's been helping me improve my movement mechanics, clear up some injuries that I had from rugby when I was younger and just training loads and not doing things properly um, in the gym. He's also really helped me improve my performance down to this as well. So this is kind of a sequence of mobility drills that I do at the start of all my training sessions. Uh, this one is basically to prepare me for deadlifts. So what you can see here is, as I've said, an adductor stability drill, and then we're going into a single leg RDL with toe tap, with a rotation and a lateral lean, trying to get into the lateral hip and posterior hip, which is tight for me, always had tight hips, and they always tighten up through running. So basically these two movements allow me to not only open the hips up, but also gain a good amount of tension in the glutes and the hamstrings, which is essential if you wanna then go on and lift heavy weight and remain injury free, which is obviously what I wanna do. I've noticed amazing progress since working with Fred and spending more time doing this stuff. It really does make the difference. Obviously the goal here is not to progressively overload, it's not to use heavy weights. It's, as I said before, it's to gain tension in the areas that you need more tension. And my deadlifters flew up since I started incorporating these short drills into my routine. I did three rounds of this. So fully warmed up now onto the main strength move of the day, conventional deadlift. This is how I start all my sessions with your main kind of strength movement. So today, obviously conventional deadlift on squat day, barbell back squat, sometimes a reverse lunge. Push day will be like an incline bench or dumbbell bench. And then pull day would be either a heavy pull up or a pendulum row. At the moment, this is what I'm doing on my hinge days. So just warming up with one plate aside, I think it was 70 kg here. These plates were quite tall, so I think you could probably class it as, it's not a rack pull, but essentially the range of motion wasn't quite as much as normal with Olympic plates, which is what I usually use. So then moved on to a set of 100, warming up, I think it did five reps there. Then moved on to the first working set, 130 kilo here for 10 reps. Don't think I filled more because the set would be way too long to film. Um, but I was doing wave loading today, so basically four sets, one set of 10, then you increase the weight and do a set of five. Then you go back down in weight, but heavier than the first set of 10 to do another set of 10, and then increase the weight again to kind of peak at a heavy set of five. So this was the first set of 10 here, 130K. Then I did a set of five on just 132.5. Uh, actually, no, sorry, it's 135, just because the first set of 10 felt really heavy. Obviously switched angle so we can get a bit of bicep and vein in there just to prove that I'm lean. So yeah, heavy set of five here. And to be honest, the, the biggest limiting factor with this workout was grip strength, just obviously warm climate, didn't have any chalk, didn't have any straps. The bar was pretty shit too, so I really need to buy another pair of straps and bring them with me next time. But nonetheless, here's some decent numbers. So what did I do here? Yeah, so I thought that I'd added an extra five kg on each side to hit the, I think it was the second set of five. But actually it was just 10 kg each side, each side, sorry. So this was 150K cheeky flex. Um, so you can see first rep went up really slowly and I was like, what the fuck? 140 feels really, really heavy. And then I think I did three or four reps. Obviously hands are slipping there. 
go. Hummy's looking shredded. Yeah, four reps. Tried to switch grip, and I think I failed on this. And I was like, what? That can't be right. And I think I look at the plates and realize they're actually tens. So PT's good for some things, but still can't count. Um, so I decided to just take the tens off and then just rip a few more reps, 130. I think I, I can't remember how many I got. I think I did four, so it was like seven reps in total. But um, anyway, first week of a new training block, always gonna be a bit of experimentation in new rep ranges, but recorded the numbers on my app. And then the goal next week is to progress on that. Right, heavy strength movement out of the way, moved on to this functional bodybuilding finisher. So three rounds here, three movements. Movements were dumbbell RDL, then a kneeling dumbbell thruster, which you'll see next. And then lastly was a wide stance dumbbell RDL. So the goal of this basically is just to accumulate a hell of a lot of volume. So you were doing, well, I was doing 21 reps on the first round on each of the exercises, then it was 15 and then it was nine. So a descending rep scheme. And what you wanna do with the weights, if you're doing a de descending rep scheme is you wanna increase the weight each round. So I think on, for example, on the deadlifts, I started on 22 kg for 21 reps, then I upped it to 28 kg for 15. And then I think the last set I did 32 kg for nine reps on both the sets of deadlifts. But I only filmed one round here because we would've been here forever, but um, barely took any rest in between sets. Feeling really fit. This is where the benefits of zone two work and the running really come in. Uh, I just noticed my recovery between sets on this high volume sort of stuff is, is just really, really good. Got a really good pump on here as well. Legs absolutely done in now. Moved on to a little bit of core because pretty much train core like four or five times a week and got Marbella in less than a month now. So just doing some Leg raise variations here, single leg into double leg. Again, working on parts of my body that are relatively weaker than the rest. So lower abs are a weakness for me, believe it or not. Then moved on to second part of the ab circuit, which was a hand supported side plank. Really noticed that the right side of my body is weaker than my left, probably won't see it, but I am shaking a little bit more. So that's something I'm gonna be trying to improve this month is building up that right side. Just finishing off doing that kind of thing that YouTubers do where they stand in front of the mirror with their camera and flex the body part that they just trained. But uh, yeah, jokes aside, actually a really, really good session. Didn't have any phone signal, which I think was a really good help. Just got on with it. Okay, not sure where I'm gonna stick this in the video, but I wanted to go over the kind of ins and outs of the photo shoot prep that I'm doing at the moment. So I've just summarized the main kind of key components of it in terms of training and nutrition. So obviously when you go in something like this, it's just a nine week stint, you've got to have a goal at the end. Obviously I'm going to be doing a photo shoot, that's just to get some good pictures uh, to promote my brand, put on my website, put on Instagram and obviously provide a bit of social proof. But to go a bit deeper than that, I wanted to lose a little bit of body weight and, and keep that off um, in the long term to improve my running performance. I want to run a good half marathon time in September. So that was obviously a motivation. These are goals that I discussed with JJ, who's managing my nutrition before I signed up with him. Obviously, with a lighter body weight becomes, well, comes the ability to run faster more easily. And the recovery between sessions is better as well because there's not as much, much stress and impact going through the joints when you're doing these runs. So my recovery between runs has been great, which has allowed me to still maintain performance in the gym as well, which is obviously a massive part of my training. I want to maintain a more athletic look year round. Um, I've got quite a lot of, well, a relatively decent amount of size for someone who runs because I've been bodybuilding for 12 years and I find it very easy to maintain. So I want to kind of maintain more of an athletic hybrid look year round. So this is an opportunity to kind of take a little bit of weight off fast and then maintain that for the rest of this year and then going into next year, 2024. Brand promotion, whenever you get yourself in good shape, it's great motivation for clients and it's just social proof showing people that you do actually practice what you preach. There's a lot of coaches that don't. Um, they'll tell their clients to stick to calorie deficits and they've never done it themselves. So I want to prove that I can do this and I've been documenting the process all over my Instagram the whole time. Um, and my kind of goal with this was obviously to still have a little bit of flexibility, be able to be able to have the odd meal out, um, but still showcase discipline, like sticking to a meal plan, I wouldn't say it's not easy, but you do have to have a lot of discipline to do that when you could just go out and, you know, 
nail meals out all the time if you really, really wanted to. Um, so there has been a flexible approach to this. I've been following a meal plan, which I'll get into in a second, um, but I have had the odd meal out, which has been good. So training wise, obviously I follow a hybrid style of training. So strength training and bodybuilding, five sessions a week, four of those are intense, heavy lifting. One on a Saturday at the end of the week is kind of like a movement, mobility, kind of like a little bit of shoulder work in there. I wouldn't really call it an intense training session. So four heavy sessions, one lighter session. And all of these uh, sessions are focused on progressing on the main compound movements with accessory work and movement work as well, which allows me to remain mobile for my running. I'm doing four runs a week at the moment, following a half marathon plan, doing two easy aerobic runs, one speed session and one long run currently, totaling about 30 to 45 kilometers a week. In a couple of weeks time, just because where I'm at in my phase of training at the moment, there will be two speed sessions and just one easy run, but that's because I'm following an actual half marathon prep. But I don't think the distance will ever go past 45k a week. There might be like a 48 in there, but that's where I'm hovering basically. So it, essentially expenditure is fairly consistent with the running. Nutrition wise, obviously got me in a deficit straight away. I think from where my maintenance was at before, probably started in about a 600 calorie deficit. So naturally body weight came up quite quickly. Uh, I'm following a meal plan with some flexibility. Um, so I was given kind of like different options for different meals, but I am following a meal plan. Um, I'm building up my meals like, like to the gram as well. So we've opted for a high protein, high carb, moderate fat approach just because obviously high protein to maintain and build muscle mass, high carb to replenish glycogen stores after the running and before the weight training session. This is massively important if you're doing hybrid training um, and moderate fat. So historically I'd eaten quite high fat and moderate carb. So we kind of switched that and I've seen massive improvements in my performance and my physique. I'm holding a more kind of full look, which I'll show you at the end because I've got some progress photos. Uh, we've done five high days and two low days. So essentially all that happened on the low days, it's when I'm only training once or on rest days and I don't need as many carbs. So it's just a nice way to create a little bit more of a deficit. So going in, well, I'm in week seven now, but weeks one to six, low to high progress so far, three and a half kg lost, weighed in at 82.3 when I started and lowest weigh in so far was yesterday at 78.8. So Decent amount of weight loss for someone who is fairly lean starting out. Um, weeks one to four, 2,950 calories on average. Then we pulled things down in week five because body weight started to plateau. So it was 2,750 and that's currently what I'm on now. And that has allowed me to kind of linearly drop body weight. And the plan for the next three weeks, seven, eight and nine is not to actually change nutrition at all because I'm pretty much within like one pound of where I want to be on that day of the photo shoot so all we're going to do is increase steps slightly each week um i've just added on here as well added on extra carbs for longer runs just like if i was doing 14k it wouldn't be enough to eat 2750 calories that day so basically added on like an extra 30 grams of carbs to every 2k but never really went past 3000 calories this whole prep and this was my starting photo probably not fully representative of how i was looking to be honest coming off the back of food poisoning and then massively increasing calories to try and gain body weight back led to me being a little bit bloated and looking very watery. Um, but this is where I'm at now, start of week seven. So I think I was 82 here and 78.8 there. So, so yeah, that's just a quick rundown of the kind of strategy behind training and nutrition for this photo shoot. But essentially, I haven't really changed anything in my routine. I'm just being a little bit stricter with the diet expenditure. Is pretty much the same in terms of training, um, but then we've just focused a little bit more on increasing steps over the last few weeks and, it, and it's working a treat. So I think I'm gonna come in in definitely the best shape that I've ever been in. I feel like this is probably the best shape I've been in ever. Uh, I've probably been leaner in the past, but wasn't wasn't as um, wasn't as full, didn't have as much muscle, and I certainly wasn't running as much. So I'm really happy with how it's going. Final gym session of the week went down to apparently the best gym in Parma called Joel Fitness. It was all right, very bodybuilding focused. Um, took the opportunity to link up with my younger brother as well, who lives in Mallorca. He's 18. He's only been training for like nine months. I've had him on a push pull leg split program um, and he's absolutely fucking wham. Like he's put on about 11 kg 
in the last nine months. Um, really, really good genetics. So basically we just hit a filthy upper body pump bodybuilding session just finishing out the week. So I'm just gonna roll some tunes on top of this, but uh, yeah, it was a good session. Pump secured. Sunday run day, just boxed off the last run, the last training session of this week. 14K long run pace, five minutes per kilometer, bang on. I'm gonna end the video here because just conscious that it's getting long and I'm gonna pick up with the next one where I'm gonna cover how I got started in the fitness industry, online coaching, and I'm gonna run through a full upper body training day that I do on the first day of the week, Monday. So yeah. Thank you for watching. If you're still with me, do all those things that YouTubers do. Like, comment, subscribe. Cheers.